It's used commonly as an agriculture fertilizer and uh, most of the risks there is associating of hooking up the farm equipment and the transfer of it. Uh, in an explosion like this or where it's leaking, uh, it can, it's a water loving gas and so if it comes in contact with your eyes, your, your mouth, even your lungs, it causes a burn. It just attracts water and causes a burn. The nice thing about ammonia is that at about 25 parts per million, you can smell it. So with a normal sequence, when you can smell ammonia, you can get away from it uh, without being injured. Uh, in these particular cases with very high levels, uh, the injuries can occur very quickly and it's based on the parts per million that you're being exposed to. At a certain level you can't smell it, but still it can cause uh, a significant uh, mucous membrane in terms of eyes uh, and your larynx, you can swell shut and you can't breathe and high enough it can destroy your lung. Anhydrous is in a liquid form, so it's more concentrated. Uh, uh, concentration probably be the biggest piece uh, but and again you put ammonia with chlorine and various things even the cleaners people can be injured in home cleaning so in this particular case it's in a it's in a liquid form it's highly concentrated and the levels are going to be higher as it uh, gasifies if you know the levels are rising you need to get out of there you need to be far enough away from where the high levels are uh, and so that would be preferable uh, again, accidents happen uh, with chemicals, you know, train derailments and all, and people get trapped. Uh, but if you, if you get a sense of it, you do need to move, uh, move on and get away from the source. Ammonia, also depending on what it's interacting with in the containers, you can get hydrogen from that, which is obviously very explosive. So most of that would be consumed, but then once the fire starts, you've got all the other risk, the particulates and the other compounds that are burning that are irritating to respiratory tract, especially of people with asthma and COPD. The inhalation risks change once the original explosion uh, occurs. You've got other compounds, uh, like I say, particulate and whatever is burning, just like in a regular fire. Uh, the only thing you don't have to worry about would be carbon monoxide because it's not in a closed space. And that's what gets in house fires, you get into trouble with carbon monoxide. That wouldn't be the case here, but you still have a big plume of smoke that has particulates in it that you can see, and that's dangerous to people with uh, underlying uh, respiratory conditions.